So today on Nation, a window cleaning podcast, we're talking all about getting more reviews. You know I talk about reviews all the time. You know they're important, but let's dive into why they're important. So today, I got an awesome guest with me, so stay tuned to WCR Nation. What's up, everybody? Jersey here from windowcleaner.com, and you are here. What is up? Hey, if it's your first time here, have a look around. Hope you enjoy it. We have well over five years of content. Been doing this now for 302 straight weeks, not missing one. So you got lots of to follow, lots to binge on, just lots to catch up on. So go do that. It's available anywhere podcasts are, and of course, also on YouTube. Uh, if you aren't new and you've watched episodes, but more importantly, you've made it into the cool kids category, that means you've done that all and you've bought in your supplies through me. Eh? Shameless plug. Well, it is because of you that I get to live the lavish lifestyle of uh, microwave meals. So thank you very much for letting me put your orders in. And if you want a sales rep, I would love to be that for you. My number directs 862 312 two zero two six yes that's a cell phone yes this is a shameless plug and yes i want to be a rep so definitely let me know on that uh and also you know all the stickers everything you've seen american window cleaner magazine is absolutely amazing if you haven't yet you know i also own the magazine so if you haven't gotten a subscription please do go and get one it's awcmag.com forward slash sub get a subscription i'm gonna see who gets one and who doesn't so I know if you don't have one yet, uh, go out there, get that, and uh, be absolutely amazing on that side. So today, we are talking about reviews, one of the absolute most important things in the history of business, in my opinion, is reviews, and I have a guest with me from Nice Job. How's it going? Hey, how's it going? Thanks for having me. Super excited to be here. Yeah, if anybody doesn't know Nice Job, A, they're living under a rock, because we've done a ton with windowcleaner.com with you guys. Um, I've talked about it a ton, but introduce kind of the company, what it does, and give a synopsis on kind of the the whole company. Awesome. Yeah. So we are a reputation marketing software. Um, we make it super easy for window cleaning contractors such as yourselves to collect way more online reviews and from their past and current customers. And these reviews help local businesses build their online reputation and rank higher on Google, which is always like a great goal to have, yeah. and ultimately drive more leads and sales. So this is all automated. Um, we make it super easy for you to ask for reviews, super easy for your customers to leave reviews, and easy for them to be shared so that you can spread the word to the whole world. Yeah, actually use the reviews. That's the big thing is people, you know, little old lady uh, down the street says, oh, you guys did such a good job, you know, and she writes you a handwritten note. That's super nice, but doesn't really do much in the realm of uh, SEO and, and letting other people know. Exactly. Yeah, no, it's very important to use those reviews and build your reputation with it. Yeah, yeah. And one big thing about reviews, as you guys all know anyway, is that they're pretty, they're not permanent, but they're pretty permanent. When you're talking reviews that companies have from four or five years ago, if you accumulate 500 reviews, that means next year you're going to have 500 plus reviews that people can watch. And eventually that social accreditation where you get an awesome rating from 500 people, that's as good as a, re that's as good as a referral, I should say, right? Pe there's so many people who like you, they can't all be wrong. You know, if you have one or two of them, well, there's your mom and your, your grandma. And that's, the only reviews you have. We have this term that's called uh, customer driven growth. So we actually believe that you can essentially clone those happy customers and attract those same kind of people back to you. So using your reviews to market your you your happy customers to potentially new happy customers is essential yeah. in creating that whole customer driven growth strategy. Yeah, it's like uh, an army of salespeople out there too, when they start praising you, you know? Yeah. But why are reviews like valuable in your opinion? Like just having reviews, I, I get it, I understand it, but why is a review so valuable? So it really is boiled down to the trust. Yeah. And if, if you're a trustworthy company, people are going to come see you. If they see people that are um, talking about you, even if you have like a review that's not so great, if somebody reads that review and sees why you, potentially made a mistake there and that you executed the mistake in a great way, they're still going to be tr having a trust value with you and they're yeah. still going to try and try you out. Yeah. I, I, 
I have an issue sometimes when I see something on products like all five star reviews and you're like, okay, so what are they doing with the bad ones? There's got to be bad ones out there somewhere, you know? And I almost, when I go on like Amazon and anything else, I'll search the bad reviews because I want to see if it's like the directions were hard. Like that's not bad product. That's bad. You don't understand instruction. So I love reading negative reviews because it gives you a better insight. If somebody just says, oh, everything was awesome. They did great. Like my daughter recommended that like stuff like that is great and it works towards the whole, but it doesn't really tell you anything. Right. And just like you, I definitely go onto Amazon. And if I'm buying a new hair dryer because my last one that I bought on Amazon broke way too fast, yeah. I'm definitely going to go to that review source and I'm going to, um, actually go to the negative reviews right away and be like, why, what's wrong with this thing? So yeah. if it's things like uh, the instructions are too hard, I can probably deal with that. <laughs> right. I'm pretty able to read instructions, but yeah. if it's like it broke after a day, then I'm not going to definitely, I'm definitely not going to go back to that. But essentially I'm also looking at the positive reviews and seeing what great feedback they have so that I can, I can um, make sure that that's going to be for my experience as well. Yeah. Um, believe it or not, like 12, 12 times um, a customer review is 12 times more credible, credible than like a salesperson telling you that you're amazing. So yeah. like you mentioned earlier, using your customers to be your word of mouth um, marketing is, is a super cool way and less expensive way to get more leads. <laughs> yeah. yeah. If, if, you know, a hundred lead or a hundred reviews are saying, these guys are so nice. They're just so pleasant. Like instantly your brain goes, well, if hundred people said the exact same thing, it's gotta be true. That's that accreditation thing. And the other thing, go back to Amazon where I like to kind of compare, even though we're not Amazon, but you can look at something and see, okay, this product has 1100 reviews and this product has four reviews. I'm not going to buy the four. If everything else is the same, I'm going to go with the more because it's just more, it's been tested more. It's been found out more. I don't want to be the guinea pig. And it's the same thing with services. If people haven't ever used you before, they don't want to be the guinea pig. They're okay with Mrs. Jones and a hundred other people to kind of be that guinea pig. I love that you just said that because that definitely puts a nice little segue to where you can show up if you get a lot of reviews, which is the Google map three pack. Yeah. Um, if you haven't tried this already, Google your business and then your, your service area and uh, sorry, not your business, but your business type and your service area. And then see if you pop up in this Google map three pack, which is the directly underneath the ads. Um, what gets you up there is how many reviews you get, how often you get those reviews. Cause you could have had like 500 reviews last year and then you haven't had one at all this year. That's yeah. not gonna, that's not gonna help you with the Google algorithm recency is a huge thing. Yeah. Um, and then you actually responding to those reviews. So I'm, I'm curious to see how many people don't actually respond to their reviews, but cause that's super important. Um, not only just because people want to see how you react to, um, the, the great feedback that you're getting, but also because it helps with the algorithm. It really yeah. does. <laughs> and it shows that you're a real person. You know, mm -hmm. if there's a bunch of reviews and they're all good, but yet you're never responding, then they're like, well, this is like a dead company. It's just a faceless, you know, Everybody wants to to fall in love with you. They want the person, not the company. So anything you can do to kind of show them your personality really, really helps. Yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. Definitely nope. your, your company. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Tell, tell me kind of in your opinion, too, what, what's a good review? So you talked about bad reviews and good reviews, but what's like the cliche good review? What would you say is the most valuable review you can have? Well, some companies actually, I don't know if um, all of you guys do this, but some companies actually provide a bonus to their uh, their employees if they get their name included into uh, their review. Yeah. So that right there is already an amazing review because it's giving you, just like you mentioned, you're a human now. You're not a right. robot just getting giving out services. Adding that customer service extra value there from that particular person that serviced you is is essential to having great reviews. Um, of course, anything written in there that tells them the experience that you had will be a bonus. But um, try, hopefully, most people will give you some sort of feedback rather than just put the five stars and then walk away. Yeah, yeah. There's. I always say that there's nothing worse than. Well, let me rephrase that. A four-star review is probably worse, but like a five-star review and it just says they do great work. And it's like, 
well, okay, well, th thanks. I mean, that that's great, but that literally is just like dumbed down. You can't, you don't read into that. But if somebody's like, oh man, I had this stubborn window and they just helped so much. I mean, you can't, you can't dictate a review. You can't tell them how to say things or what to say because that's not really review. But yet you hope that that's kind of what it is. And that's also where numbers come in. If you can get 500 reviews, there's a lot of really good information that's going to be, not every person's going to go, they are great, five stars. You know, at that point of having so many reviews, it kind of floods it with uh, with information too. Yes, and then the, all those great reviews can also drown those bad reviews, so you don't have to worry about all those um, negative ones that you might potentially get. But on yeah. top of that, um, it's 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 all in the actual sales process and in the follow up sequence. It's good to include, even if you have an automated system, even if you have some software in place that helps you get more reviews, it's still a really good idea to have that connection with the customer after the job is done to yeah. just be like, hey, how did um, so-and-so do um, with your windows? Um, they actually get a bonus if uh, you mention their name or yeah. um, we're just really happy to service you. Uh, let us know if your friends and family would be interested too. Just kind of give them an example of ways to um, respond with that review. Yeah. And we'll talk about organic reviews in a second, but there's nothing like asking. If you actually ask somebody, oh, we'd love a review, it happens. But tell us about Nice Job and how Nice Job basically asks and follows up and keeps with. And how can you get so many more leads by using that than you do just organically? So with our program, we have a smart follow-up system that makes it super easy for your clients to leave a review um, and super easy for you to ask the review. So we'll follow up within uh, two weeks, at least four times. Um, and within that sequence, if they do leave a review, they actually get booted out of the campaign so they don't get bombarded with extra review requests. And we're not turning that five-star review into a one-star review. Right. Um, and then once you actually get that review or uh, get that person to get to the clicky button to actually leave that review, it takes them directly to the review source that you want them to go to, which in our opinion, Google is king and then Facebook is great too. But yeah. there's also other review softwares that you might want to include as well. Um, once they do leave that amazing review, we can actually share those reviews automatically and turn those reviews into content onto your social media and onto your website. Yeah. So giving you extra SEO and not just the reviews, making the reviews work for you so you can get more leads. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I know people who have used nice job who literally went from like 16 reviews and in, I think it was a year or it was two years or something. They had like 300 reviews. I mean, it was incredibly fast on how, quickly it went from hey we, we've been doing it i ask everybody and i only have 13 reviews to just having a simple process to have that happen it's such a big difference and now you're having 300 people talking your praises like i mean if you're if you're on you you mentioned this before about places and that pack if you're on places and somebody says window cleaning in my area wherever it is near me if if five people pull up and one of them has 27 reviews and one of them has 13 and one of them has 16 and one of them has, you know, uh, 42. And then one of them has 612. Well, you instantly go, well, I mean, what are you going to hire? Oh, which, what are you going to, that justifies your price being a little bit higher. It justifies your professionalism. It justifies your just social credibility. It just justifies everything by having leads. Leads are just so absolutely important, but that's also why, doing it yourself is a little bit tricky. But if somebody wants to kind of get into the nice job thing, walk me through real quick on how they set this up. Because you're saying it does all this stuff, but how how can I, how, how does it get implemented in the back end on the easy ease of use side of it? So first of all, before I tell you that, those people that are not getting as many reviews as they want, even if they have a great process in place, is because there are generally two reasons. Number one, it's just too hard for the clients to actually get to that point. So that's yeah. why um, having a smart link in place um, is super important. So you know where to direct your clients. And then number two, they literally just forget. I don't know how many times I've been to... <laughs> A restaurant and I absolutely love the service there and they ask us automatically uh, after with like a great review link how how was yeah. our service and I'm just 
going to forget to do it unless they remind me. So it's yeah. very important to have that reminder in place as well. But if you want to get on to nice job, there's a couple ways to do it. You can go to our website and sign up. And then our activations team will actually walk you through all the steps of how to connect all your, um, all your processes together. Ideally, if you have a CRM, um, we can actually automate it off of that and on like closed job, for example, as one of the triggers, and then it'll immediately um, initiate the sequence of text and then three follow-up emails. Nice. Uh, if you do not have a CRM, there's still ways to do it because we obviously have people that use paper and pen or Excel sheets, which is totally fine because as long as you're co um, collecting emails, names and phone numbers, that's all you need to be successful with our, our program because you got to add them in and then yeah. Yeah, yeah. that's it. That's interesting, actually. You were talking about uh, restaurants, but we have receipts. I don't know how many stores you go to and they circle it and go, oh, if you, you know, you could win $20 if you do this and they hand it to you. I've never, I've never even known anybody to do that, much less have I ever given it a second thought. I throw the receipt out on the way out of the door. Like, even if you put it in somebody's face, it doesn't mean they're doing it. Yeah. It's all yeah. about like, we, we kind of like, it's kind of like marketing, like you stay top of mind. As yeah, long as you yeah. get reminded, you'll eventually do it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. So it, I'm getting reviews. What if I get a negative review? Like what if I'm getting like a crappy review? Like how do I handle that? Like what's the best way to take a bad lead and give it some life? So there's a few ways to actually deal with bad reviews. First of all, I would urge you to be grateful for those bad reviews because they're essentially going to help you build your business better and improve your processes. It's important yeah. to still get those bad reviews. Um, and especially Google, Google actually likes it when you get bad reviews because they know that you're a real person and you're not review gating. Yeah. Um, if you're not familiar with the term review gating, it's basically being very biased and not letting anybody that you know that's going to leave a bad review. Yeah. Leave a bad review. You okay over there? Everything's beeping, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> beep, 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 beep. Yeah. So, <laughs> what's important with those bad reviews, though, is to respond back to them, of course, um, very, very quickly, uh, and then be professional when you're responding back. Because yeah. a lot of people get really heated and get think of it like as a personal. Personal, yeah. Them. Yeah, you got to take a step back, review, um, take a breath, and realize that it's not you personally that's getting attacked. Yeah. It's, um, helping you, if anything. Just yeah. be grateful for that feedback. Um, it it is like, actually when you respond, you're you're giving it some real. I mean, if I said something to you as I'm like, hey, I just I don't enjoy this product that you present. You can come back and hey, I'm sorry this didn't work for you. You know, I, we we do try and address the issues they may have had, and even sometimes offer them. You know, hey, uh, if you do decide to try us again. Uh, let me know and I'll give you $100 towards a new service. We'll make everything right. But like that's that side of what you do to respond to it shows them, oh, wow. So not everybody's happy. We know some people are just crazy. But then this is how they help, they handled it, basically. So another thing about these reviews, though, is if you are uh, if you have a proper customer guideline and uh, it's it's something outside of your your sp scope of work, for example, um, it can actually deter Per, um, problem customers from actually yeah. coming to join you as well. So they know that you're not um, doing this sort of work for in within your guidelines, and then they won't actually even contact you, and it voids all this problem altogether. Yeah, there's Again, there's crazy back. people out there. There's yeah. just people who will not be happy. I'm pretty sure have never been happy with anybody because when the service is done, they're trying to get something for free. They're like, yeah, I'm not paying for this. It wasn't great. And you just clean their whole house. And you're like, well, let's talk about it. How can I make it better? They're like, I'm not even interested in that. Just give me my money back. You're like, yeah, yeah. I know what you're doing. You're a sneaky one. <laughs> yep. Yep. But then there's also those reviews that don't make any sense and weren't even like actual customers. Yeah. Those ones are super important to re respond back to. And unfortunately, it's super hard to actually get them removed. But yeah. just write the note saying, we don't have you in your database. Um, I had service from you. I, you know, you yeah. know that it's a competitor that's just leaving a bad review or just somebody, but you don't even say that. You just want to be simple. Yeah. We don't have you. We've never done service for you, but we'd love to contact us if there's anything we can do. Yeah, exactly. That's it. That's super easy. Just relax with those bad reviews. They're 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 there to help you grow. <laughs> yeah. would, would you ever try to get a bad review taken down? 
I mean, if you really want to, you can try to go that route, but it's definitely not worth the trouble because no offense to Google, they are they are, they take a long time to get back to you. Yeah. Let's just put it that way. It's and a free service. They're they're like it's not like people think that, oh, but they gotta do this thing. And it's just a free service. They're gonna get to you when they get to you. Yeah. And to be honest, it's it's not worth the time. And those reviews right there are if any if anything helping you, then anything yeah. bad. Yeah. Let's kind of jump off of really the nice good. job side of it, but what can you do as an organic? Say somebody says, "Hey, you know what? I I don't use nice job. I'm not I'm not getting that quite yet. I'm not maybe in that point of my business or whatever." As far as organic reviews, what kind of things can you do to get more reviews just organically? First thing, ask. Yeah, ask everybody. That is the most important thing to do because if you don't ask, you're not going to get anything, right? Yeah. Um, if you can. Put it into your schedule to actually remind them that's super important too and direct them w directly where you want those reviews so if you're just saying can you leave us a review they're not going to know where and then they're going to have like decision paralysis and yeah. just not leave a review at all so just make sure you give them exactly the directions on where you want them to go and then that'll make it easy for them yeah that, that's again when you get that handwritten letter about how awesome you are it's really nice to have and you put it up on your wall but the only people who ever see that are the people who walk past it you know True. <laughs> yeah. They're still nice, but yeah. You get a cookie yeah. for that. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Yeah. So in, in the review world, is there too much of a good thing? Like, can, can you have too many good reviews? Like, can you get too many reviews or do you think it just makes you stronger the more you have? So definitely getting too many good reviews is not necessarily a problem, but we found that uh, actually having a 4.9 rating is actually more effective than having a yeah. five-star rating, especially really? if you have 500 five-star reviews. Google actually thinks that's fishy and yeah. they'll start sniffing around and potentially even do scary things like uh, suspend your account or withhold reviews. And we don't want any of that. Yeah. So you want to make sure you're very unbiased when you're getting these reviews so that Google doesn't do th scary things to you because you're working hard on building these, these profiles and building your business and Google can just step in there and be put just gone yeah. completely. Yeah. Yeah. Do you think that um, kind of not putting all your eggs in one basket with reviews, do you think that that makes sense? I know you said Facebook's kind of number two, but when you get a review, should you be trying to get one on Google and then the next one you should be trying to get on Facebook or should you split them up? Or do you think Google still just, it's the place? So that's a great question because I have, um, I've thought about this myself because I, oh, I don't know if I mentioned this. I'm actually a cleaning business owner myself. So yeah. we definitely um, deal with reviews as well. But what we find is that when you're going to search for a service, you're going to go straight to Google and search for that service. It doesn't matter if you go to another um, review software, even though if, if, if it pops up in the Google search, essentially yeah. that's a, the secondary place that you're going to look. So we do think that Google is king and Google is where you want to direct most of your reviews. If someone doesn't have a Google account, it's good to have a secondary option like Facebook, for example. From what I've heard, Facebook actually, Facebook reviews actually have some weight in SEO as well. So nice. it's good to have it there. Um, of course, like Home Advisor, if you are active on there, that's a really important one too. Or Homestars, if you're Canadian. Um, we, uh, my cleaning business, did have Homestars as our secondary because we were using them as a lead magnet as well. And um, that helped us out a lot, uh, but we always kept Google as number one because yeah. cleaning service near me or window cleaning service near me is going to always show up with the Google reviews. Yeah. Yeah. There's so many places too in the SEO world that depending on where you search and how you search, you find different reviews. But I mean, I always tell people when they're talking about how do they advertise or where should they look at it? It's like, Okay, you want pizza, try a new pizza place here in your new town, what do you do? Uh, I just Google like pizza in this town. It's like, change that to window cleaning in that town and then that's your keyword search. Like focus on how people find you and that that's what it is. It ends up being Google and then from there, they're like, oh, here's that same company on Facebook. I look at that, I'm like, oh, here's some pictures on Instagram. I'll go look at that. It's like, nobody's going to Instagram to find the company. They're going to kind of, credit date or you know, there yeah. you go yeah you know so it's like it's a whole thing you can't be everywhere but i agree too you can't have too many reviews it just it just creates a solid company i mean think 10 years from now there's gonna be companies out there with 
you know, 10,000, you know, reviews because they've been doing this for so stinking long. It's definitely possible. Wouldn't that be amazing? I'd love to see that. <laughs> crazy. Like who, who, how can you compete with that? I know a guy, uh, Bobby Walker, um, who I've talked to a bunch and he was in a big, big review push. And he said, this just like the reviews themselves just changed. And everybody's just like, Google, I, I'm finding you there. It's like, you, you look, there's, there's 20 different window cleaners, but why am I going to call this guy? He's got no reviews. You got like hundreds more than the next person there. Like instantly you become more credible. Absolutely. Instantly more credible. Exactly what you just said. By the way, Bobby is one of nice jobs, buddy. So thanks for yep. popping up up for us. <laughs> he's been, he's been doing that for a long, long time. So yeah. Yeah. He's a super cool guy too. <laughs> yeah. 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 So with uh, nice job itself kind of on the platform, is there anybody who's ever used it that didn't have results? Like, is there a way that it could be done wrong? Or do you think that it's just science and, and how it works? Oh, of course. If you don't ask, if you don't use the pro program to ask people, it's not going to be successful for you. you yeah. to, even if you do it automated or if you do it um, um, selectively with your own input, you still have to ask for the yeah. reviews. Yeah. It's not going to come up with some magical made up reviews. It's coming from real people. From Did your you get real reviews, oh man, I know, right? Awesome. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, that the 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 platform itself. What's really nice is as I talk about efficiencies a ton, and anybody who's watching knows that I beat it like a dead horse. But efficiencies, when it comes to even something like that, is having a program that does that. And again, I, I don't. I'm not trying to make this a, a a commercial for nice job, but having a program that does that is like having a, a staff member that does that. Like you're paying a, a lot less money to have a company handle something for you in an aspect as compared to having an entire employee that would handle that as part of their aspect. And that's kind of where it makes sense to have a place like Nice Shop. Right. And also being able to ask at the right time. So even yeah. if you have that employee to do it, um, making sure that they do it at the right time, which yeah. is like the finished job result. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I know a lot of people when they, cause we all talk about re, um, uh, reviews and kind of how to increase them. And I look at like businesses just as a whole and tell them kind of where their, their holes are. And we'll look at like, well, how are you getting reviews? Oh, well, as soon as we're done, it's in my spiel, you know, when we're all done, go, Oh, great. We'd love a review, you know, and it doesn't come. And it's like, well, you, you just said like, okay, you got a high five, but you didn't, like you said, walking them through and going, here is where we would like this review. If you have a second, like people are very happy when they're happy with you, they're happy to do something for you, right? They feel like they're almost indebted. Like, oh, if these guys are so nice. I just, I have to go tell the world. All exactly. you have to do is get the platform to let them do that. And they come to you. Yep. Again, making it easy for them. Otherwise they're not going to do anything. <laughs> you yeah, got to walk yeah. their hand, walk, what is it? Take their hand and walk them through it. <laughs> yes, exactly. Exactly. And they're, and to tell you the truth, when people are happy, then they want to do that to you. They want to leave a review. You're just really helping them find out where it goes. It's the, you know, if they come to you and they say, well, I'm really, I have dirty windows. I want them cleaned. Your job's to clean the windows for them, get them through to book the job, do the service and then have clean windows. Same thing with reviews. It's just, having it also be permanent is so much better than a referral because that thing or word or review or however they said, whatever they said three years ago is still there where Mrs. Jones told somebody at card club, but they told them one time, like six months later, they're not remembering you unless somebody talks specifically about window cleaning reviews are just as permanent as anything on the internet can be. Yeah. You know, it's funny that you say that. Um, but those people that want to leave a good review, they actually don't think they have to because yeah. they already got a good review. It's those bad reviews that are going to go out of their way and leave that bad review regardless. Yeah. So even if you're asking everybody, that bad review is going to slip through the cracks and um, make its way through through it without anything that you can do. Yes, yeah. <laughs> good I, reviews that you want to capitalize and get yeah. results from. Well, you're looking to is the average is part of it. I, I, I literally earlier today was looking for, I have a date night with my wife and we're going to find a new pizza place. That's what she wants. And I searched pizza in Charlotte, which is outside of my normal, I mean, we're right outside of there. So it's like 30 minutes away. Um, so I searched there for pizza and one of the places popped up, they had a 1.8 star rating and they had like eight reviews. So it had out of those eight reviews, a lot of them had to be bad. So like people just weren't leaving good reviews. So that just tells me instantly don't go there because 
it's so mediocre that people aren't even leaving good reviews. It's just more on the side of bad. And something's got to be really bad for somebody to like leave a review unless they're just like an angry person, you know? But to contradict that just a little bit, they're probably not asking everybody. No. They're only asking those people that they're not even asking those people. They're just yeah. going out of their way to make sure that they are pissed about their experience and maybe yeah. trying to get some sort of monetary um, reward back for yeah. it. Just like, yeah, I, I still, I don't even know if I would find that credible, to be honest. I'd have to try yeah. it out myself. And yeah, it really almost good. makes me want to try it. Just to exactly. <laughs> it's, it's the, um, what do they say that it's uh, when somebody likes you, they'll tell three people. If they hate you, they'll tell seven. Yeah. You know, exactly, it's that yeah. same thing as everybody wants to complain about the things and they'll tell a couple people and they think they did their due diligence. It's so much easier to complain than to say something nice about somebody. Yeah. It's, it's crazy that our human humankind's like that. <laughs> and people are more willing to listen to that. Like if you think about gossip, gossip is never good gossip. Like, oh my gosh, did you hear? So-and-so got a new job and they're doing great and it's awesome for their family. Like they didn't, that's not gossip. Nobody's interested in that. They want to hear no. the, the dirt, you know? <laughs> I'm a chick, so I get it. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Well, uh, I appreciate you spending some time with me either way today. Um, if somebody does want to sign up for a nice job or just see them, I have a link down below, but tell them how they can get a hold of you if they have questions, if they can find the company, tell us all about it. I would love to chat with anybody that wants to ha um, chat about nice job or anything about reviews. Um, my contact is super easy. It's Angelica, A-N-G-E-L-I-C-A at nicejob.com. Nice and easy. You can get me there and um, we'll chat. Be happy to answer any questions. Of course, um, we're going to have a, a link on the bottom if you have, if you want to sign up for nice job. But other than that, I hope to talk to you all soon. <laughs> nice. nice. Well, I really, really appreciate it. And I appreciate you guys listening to me or watching. Um, if you haven't yet, shameless plug number two, I am a sales rep for windowcleaner.com. So let me put your orders in. My number is 862-312-2026, big or small, it doesn't matter. Uh, and of course, get your subscription to the American Window Cleaner Magazine. It's a monthly magazine sent to your door and it's amazing if I do say so myself. So go get that. Uh, until next week, go out there and get way more reviews than the next guy, but more importantly, go and be epic.